Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Iron Man. We are still currently on the raids grind. The current KC is 901, and the goal for this video is going to be to reach 1000 raids KC. If you didn't watch the last video yet, then here's your chance now because there's a couple major spoilers I'm about to spoil right now, so... This is your fair warning. The last video, we got two major things. The first thing being right here in the looting bag, we got the Kodai Insignia, my second Mega Rare. And the other thing we got is, well, you probably know I've been hunting Herbivore in my downtime a lot. We finally got the Herbivore pet. There it is. And if we check the KC, that took me 4,120 to get. And for 1 out of 6.5k, it's pretty good. Although I would have rather gotten lucky at raids, but... I guess you can't choose where to be lucky, right? You can't just always choose to get the drop, right guys? I'm not going crazy, you're going crazy. Anyways, I gotta start off today by redoing his spore and getting my scales out of the looting bag because the blowpipe is almost empty for scales. Oh yeah, I got this book of knowledge while I was mining earlier, so put down an herb lore. And we are very close to an herb lore level. We'll probably get that during raids today. Whenever I take everything out of his spore, I just like looking at everything. Like my whole inventory is full, my whole looting bag is full. This is peak UIM right here, dude. Does this make you anxious? This is so sad, dude. I think before I started doing like Hydra and raids, I think I was at over 500,000 Zora scales and now it's nearing 300,000, which is still a lot. But it's kind of scary how fast you can really go through these. All right, fully charged trident, full scales in the blowpipe. It's a good feeling. We are all set to go back to raids. Four to one flame wall skip. I think that's how it would go. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, all right, this is going to be it. The herbler level, that's level 94. I think I started at 92 or something when I started raids and we've gained a lot of XP without actually making potions outside of raids. And that's super anti-venoms, anti-venom pluses, which are kind of important um, for Zora or Vorkath. But then again, I'd probably use the Serp Helm there anyway, so I don't know. Kind of sad it ruins the 2227 because that tricked a lot of people before. Good luck. Oh, dude, he got the pet! Dude, oh, congrats on the pet! What the heck? That's my first time seeing a pet in like, well, I saw a pet once a year ago, which was a dupe for someone. He always looks so ready to square up. He's like, hey, hey. <laughs> Very good posture. Definitely not a gamer. Well, his neck's kind of like a gamer. It is, uh, it's Thursday here, but it is Pet Friday in Europe. See, all this time I've been saying pet roll, pet roll, this is what happens. It's 1 out of 53 to get the omelet, you always get it with the purple. And we have seen 56 purple, so that's pretty much on rate to have seen an omelet for someone. Hey, hey, he needs that, he needs that. Nurse is like, what, like 170 KC or something? Yeah, he got his first drop DHCB at like 160, and now shortly after he's got his second drop, the Arcane. Very well deserved. That sounds toxic saying well deserved, like like he needed that, so I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm sorry it wasn't Dex. What's up, girl? He doesn't have the prayer level for Augur, you freaking noob, dude. Just kidding, you're not Zach. I would never roast you like that. That's literally what happened to Zach, though, on his iron. He got Augury but didn't have 77 prayer. <laughs> he has the pet already. Good luck. Oh, hey. Congrats on the drop. We're seeing a lot of drops lately. Zach is not happy, dude. Oh, I saw the Twisted V, dude. It's his first drop, dude. He's a doctor is a snowflake UYM that does not use a looting bag. And that is his first drop in 105 KC. I mean, he's been using RCB in the raid, so that's that's pretty good for him, I think. Arcane for core cam. All right, we just got an elite casket from raids. Here we go. Yep. Hello, I've learned a new thing at raids and I'm very excited to share it with you guys. So I previously showed how four to one melee skipping works at Ulm a while ago. And now I've learned how to do four to one 
and dodge the flame walls while staying in the 4 to 1 cycle. I mean, you could pretty much just watch and see what I'm doing, but for the first two hits, it doesn't really matter where you stand, and it technically doesn't matter for the third hit, but for the third hit, it is best to be standing two tiles right of the thumb, at least when you're learning. And then right before the fourth hit, you run to the thumb like a tick before you'd attack, and then continue doing your 4 to 1. And if Ulm does throw out a flame wall, you'll dodge it and you'll be able to keep going with the 4 to 1 cycle. This is nice for two reasons. First, if a teammate forgets water spells, the melee skipper won't get caught during the flame phases. And second, whether or not the team has water spells, if the melee skipper gets flame walled, the team's going to get a special attack from Ulm. So if you do this right, it guarantees no specials from Ulm during the flame phase. <laughs> Oh man, a twisted B again, dude. Wrong twisted B. That's right. Pet chance. Ever since I got the Irby pet, I've been doing a lot more mining in my downtime, but I've also kind of been trying to do more raids too. So I've sort of had more time to do mining, but also not as much time to do mining. But it's still friggin' far between every level at this point. I know I say it every time, but it's so true because it's so slow at Motherload. But that's okay because I'm not in any rush for anything. It's just uh, nice to be able to mine because doing raids is the only time in the game where I'm actually going to have the D-pick on me. So just kind of taking advantage of that. Oh, I just noticed this. I We hit 50 mil hit points XP probably a few hours ago. It's my first uh, 50 mil XP in a skill on the account. It's a huge milestone own kind of i always say if i were to ever get 200 mil on this account probably hit points would end up just being the first one passively twisted b dude oh, twisted b uckler this is gonna be it let's burn this log here we'll trade in this step that's gonna be the casket we're also uh 950 raids a little check in halfway point for the video and here we go Oh man, pet roll. This should be the elite casket. Here we go. Oh, hey, 109 attack, virtual level. And smite it at the same time. Okay. Okay, we got another elite casket. Here we go. Okay then. At this point, I've been at raids for two and a half months, which means I've had a lot of time to think about when to actually finish up at raids. My main goal in this game is to have fun, and I really have been enjoying raids, and I could see myself doing them indefinitely because I am still really enjoying them. But the longer time goes on, I felt more and more the feeling of just like every day is the same monotonous thing day in and day out. Like I wake up, I stream raids for A plus hours, and then maybe make a video like once a week or something. Dude, I, I feel like Alkin. It's not that I'm not enjoying raids, it's just that I'd prefer a variety of content to do. Like I know UYM in general is monotonous, but going on three months now of the same activity makes me miss just playing the game. I kind of miss when drops were 1 out of 128 or 1 out of 512 and I was doing 15 kills per hour. Because now with raids, some of these drops are like 1 out of 1000. I'm doing 1 kill per hour. I miss going on a new adventure every day. I miss making videos, dude. These last couple months have been the least I've ever made videos pretty much since I started YouTube. And all these videos for a while have just all been the same thing. It's just all raids. And at this point, Chambers has been by far the activity I've spent the most time on on this account. Pretty much a thousand hours at this point compared to Corp, which I think I spent like 500 hours at. Once I leave raids, I'm not sure when or if I'll come back. And as much as I'm going to hate leaving without full Ancestral, which is most likely what's going to happen, there's really no guarantee I'd even get Ancestral Top or Tebow for many more months of raiding all day every day. I'm really not going to care about leaving raids before getting a Tebow because that's kind of just like an insane weapon to get. But I am going to be a bit bummed out when I leave without finishing Ancestral because that is storable in the POH. On a UYM, items aren't really necessarily permanent. Like if I got a Tebow, you know, I could still lose that. But because Ancestral is storable in the POH, that almost kind of in a way does make it permanent on a UIM. Like I said, I don't dislike raids, but I need to pick a stopping point because I can't just keep doing this forever. I mean, well... I could, but I don't wanna. I have so much planned for the future. It's probably gonna take me at least a month or maybe even a couple months just to use up all these supplies from raids. And I have all these different fun plans and methods for using up everything. And then after all that's done, I can't wait to go back to Slayer and keep on going for pets and get the Champion's Cape and do all this other collection log stuff. 
And also, I want to try out all this new content that's come out since I've trapped myself at raids that I haven't been able to do because of the inventory issues and my items being in Hispori and stuff like that. If all I do is just keep raiding, it kind of makes me feel like a hypocrite, I feel like, because that's the same reason why I'm not going for Max. Why put off having fun exploring the game when I don't have to? I could just have fun now. I can literally just stop anytime and move on. Anyways, after a long, long time and many days of thinking and considering everything, a lot of thinking. <laughs> I think I've decided to make 1100 raids the cutoff point. I know I'm just always so indecisive. I never really know what I want to do, but I think we'll go for 1k this video and then 1.1k raids in the next video and then we'll move on. Also, I'm recording this at like 3 a.m. So I just wanted to share my late night thoughts of all the things that have been building up in my mind over these last few weeks. But yeah, that's all. Let's uh, finish off 1k strong. We're currently at 970 KC. So probably three more days of raids for this video. Oh, hey, uh, we got a game update here and I want to quickly show you this. So pretty much this whole entire update is really all just filler stuff. There's really only one important part of this update here. Um, all the stuff is just like the Arcade Spellbook rework. Uh, the beta just came out so people can test it. Uh, but the important part is hidden all the way down over here. It's raining cats and dogs. You can now interact with more of the dogs around Gilnor and cat. That is all. Back to smithing. Well, we're very close to the smithing level. Once I hop worlds here, that should give us the level. And once again, another smithing level that has been passive just from... I think it's all just been making darts, really. That is level 93. All right, and we are all done with the darts. That is over 13k. That's about 200k fletching XP. And that might be the last time, or maybe one more time we'll have to do this. Uh, until we're done with raids once I stop at 1100. Which, like I said, will probably be the stopping point. All right, good luck. Oh, oh, yes, dude, that's it. Yes. Oh, what? Dude, we just finished Ancestral. Dude, what? I can't believe it. We just finished Ancestral. I can't, dude. I was not expecting that to happen. That was actually it. Oh. Dude, what? Oh, oh dude. Oh, 973kc, we got the- dude, oh, wow. Uh, literally last night, I just made this whole clip talking about how like, oh, I'm not gonna finish Ancestral and all this stuff. Alright, we can safely put this in the POH without a warning message. And this means now we can take out the full set, dude, full freaking Ancestral. Oh, dude, that's so freaking cool. I'm- I'm shook. Okay, here we go, collection log and raids. Oh, that like it's so nice, dude. 973 KC. Good luck. Any bat to vax? No. Literally always unlucky, dude. Always unlucky. I can't believe it. This game sucks, dude. It is now time to make some changes to the gear setup. So I'm gonna grab out the rune boots and the Nezi out of his spory and put those back in the stash unit because I want to get the rune pick so that way I can drop it during the raid. I don't want to drop the D pick before Ulm. Um, but I don't mind dropping the rune pick before Ulm because that's very easy to just buy back by DC or something or we lose the raid somehow. Okay, and the D pick and rune boots and Nezzy are stored away. We'll buy another Nezzy from this guy for 50k and we'll just camp that for the raids because it has no negative bonuses. I don't have a job, I'm not going to grind one out just to use it for uh, like 100 raids. I could use the Serp but that also has negatives and I have to keep it charged with scales too. Okay, and then buy a rune pick for 32k. And I don't care if I lose that, not a big deal. Guess I'll be uh, killing a couple black dragons here to make those dehyde chaps. Still don't have a full god dehyde set. Once I go back to Slayer, hopefully I can get some more hard clues done and finish a god dehyde set eventually. Especially because they're going to be nerfing black dehyde soon, most likely. So, And then we'll buy the bee gloves down here. 104k. At least with the rune pick, now I can't accidentally D pick spec. And see, over here, I don't mind dropping the rune pick. Okay, so with this setup, because I dropped the rune pick, I have one extra gear switch, but one less rune pick, so I have the same amount of brews for Ulm, so that worked out well. Okay, here we go, another uh, elite casket. Oh, oh, apparently we have that. Well, looks cool. Anyways, kind of goes with the outfit. Look, I've been waiting a very long time to make this joke, okay? Getting head from your grandma, call that ancestral top. Thank you. I literally just realized right now as I'm heading over here that I don't have the D pick on me anymore. That was kind of the reason why I was coming to Motherload in the first place was because I just have the D pick on me. 
I mean, it's not really a big deal. I AFK here super hard anyway, so it probably really doesn't even matter using a rune pick here. Maybe I should go back to like Redwoods or fishing or something. Maybe tomorrow I'll do that. Just looking at my points here. So this was 17.6 million points since I've been back to raids. But I also probably got about 6 million points uh, when I first did raids during that first little session like a year ago. So in total, probably at about 23.6 million, maybe like 24 million points in total. And for a specific piece of Ancestral, it's 20 million points to meet the drop rate. Um, although I got all three pieces, so I think it's probably about on rate, maybe even a little bit lucky to finish full Ancestral in 24 million points. Needless to say, either way, I'm very, very happy. Although, I don't think I'm going to do CMs, because I know I do have like the dupes, but I wouldn't do CMs unless I got the pet, because you get the dust from CMs, which you need the pet to use it on. So if I get the dust, I can't bank it, I just have to drop it. So it kind of seems like a waste to do CMs. Plus, I'd have to have a couple people heavy carry me as well, and people like that wouldn't always be online to carry me through CMs anyways. Elite Casket and we get good stuff oh man dude doctor needs that I can't believe you robbed him of the arcane everyone say congratulations to Zach for getting his infernal cape on his main very proud of you and back to back I sell at 73 good one oh dude oh my god <laughs> Well, there's the second Ancestral set. <laughs> Dude, this game trolls so hard. I like that. There they are in my inventory. Um, I guess now I'll have a full Ancestral set in the main, huh? That'd be, be pretty cool. <laughs> Bro, dude, I was stressing so hard for the longest time about if I'd finish Ancestral, and then I just, I just finished two sets in like three days. Alright, dude. Alright, well, here's the log now after uh, 992 KC. <laughs> hey, we saw the back three back. Hey, hey, congrats on the arcane, bro. Back three back. Dr. Robbed for the second time. I guess kind of third time today, really. I wish Zach got Dex on his main, though. That would have been so funny. <laughs> Alright, any back four backs right here. I've never seen a back four back before. And the streak has been broken. I think we just used up all the RNG. I probably won't see any more drops, or at least not get any in my name before I finish raids. It was a nice little fun streak we had going there until the end. And this is going to be at 1,000 raids. Yeah, I, I guess I guess that's it. <laughs> and for 1,000, can we be handsomely rewarded with double herbs? Alright, that, that, that's pretty good. We still got one more day of raiding tomorrow just because it's Saturday. It's it's fun to stream on the weekends. All right, it's your boy Wet Dirt Kip coming back at you once again at 3 a.m. I know for you it's only been a few seconds, but for me, it's been a couple full days of raiding since I got the Ancestral Top, and I've gotta say, I've actually gotten really demotivated. As most of you know, I originally came back to Chambers to stock up on herbs so that way I would have potions so I could PVM indefinitely, and I had the mindset that any purples along the way are just bonuses. Well, at this point, I've got more herbs than I could ever imagine, and I got the storable set, the Ancestral, the best in slot magic gear from raids complete. Which means at this point, all there is to look forward to is a Tebow, which isn't realistic considering it's like 4 months of straight raiding all day every day just to meet the drop rate for an item that's not even storable. So that whole speech I gave a few days ago about why I'm leaving raids, that's still relevant, but just replace 1100 with 1000 instead. I just can't picture myself staying here for another two weeks just to reach some arbitrary KC because I just want to play the game again, you know, like I said before. Someone in my stream today made a very impressive argument for me as well for reasons to leave at 1k instead of 1.1k, and I gotta say, this is some very compelling logic. Now this also brings me to the next topic I wanted to mention, which is the gear setup. Now that I'm not using Void, sure I look better, but after running the DPS calcs and experiencing the raids firsthand for a couple days, Void is really the better option for me compared to my alternative. Compared to the non-Void, the Void setup is more DPS for nearly every room, including for Ulm's melee hand, which is kind of really important. And I also have one more switch now, which means I have one less shark to bring into the raid. And even though the non-Void has better defense, I haven't noticed a difference in the amount of damage that I take, and I've had to sit out of rooms at the end of the raids more often because of that. For a lot of these raids, having the one extra shark really could make a difference. On top of that, I also have the rune pick for guardians now because I would like to have the extra brew for Ulm. 
uh, which means I'm getting less points from the Guardian's room, and that also slows down the raid. Because same deal, there are quite a few raids where I run out of brews at Ulm, so the one extra brew could make the difference between dying or not dying at the end of Ulm. And even though running head lets you take like no damage, even if you have max mage, it's still more points to do melee hand for Ulm, even if you have a scuff setup like me. And I'm the arrogant streamer who wants to get the most points possible. Anyways, I'll keep on using this setup for the last couple days of raids, because it's really not worth the hassle of resetting everything just for a couple more days of raiding. But yeah, this does mean we'll be stopping at 1k KC. Or actually, I'll end up going a little bit beyond that because it's the weekend, and I just feel like streaming raids for one last weekend. Um, but yeah, we'll be ending it just a little bit past 1k KC at raids. I was just kind of thinking, if I ever went back to raids, it would be when my non-void gear would actually be worth bringing, like if I got bandos or anguish slash torture, etc. You could say I'd be a void in void. But to be honest, now that I finished Ancestral, I don't expect I'd go back to Chambers on this account because at that point, it would just be months and months of no videos since I'd specifically be going for Tebow because there's really not much other reason to go to raids. And at that point, I may as well just be a full-time streamer instead of a YouTuber. But I'm just extremely happy about finishing Ancestral. I'm just so over the moon and I will not regret leaving raids with what I've achieved here. But with all that being said, let's finish up these last couple days of raiding strong. Alright, we have an elite casket here. Might even be the last one we'll get from raids. Let's see. Is that... Oh, it's probably not new, huh? Oh, well. Yeah. Alright, this is the very last raid that we're gonna do, and... Yeah, alright. That... This is the last raid, dude. That, that's actually the last raid I'm doing, dude. <laughs> So I, I, I'm okay. I, I said I go for a back to back if I got a, a purple, but I'm, dude, I'm not going for back to back for that. We're, we're gonna leave it on the arcane. I think that's a perfect way to end raids. That pretty much sums up my experience playing this game. Alrighty, that's uh 1006 KC. Alright, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Pet roll. Pet roll. Dude, I don't know. It's just so funny that we got arcane on the last raid I was planning to do ever on this account. Well, probably for a very very long time at the very least. 1006 KC is what we're gonna be wrapping up with so let's leave the Chambers of Zarek for possibly the last time on the account. Farewell and uh, I'm just gonna AFK mine the rest of the night and figure out uh, how to say goodbye for this video. Alright I feel like there's a lot to show because this is the wrap up of over two and a half months of raiding. I just went back to check the first day that we started raids and it has been 79 days of doing Chambers of Zarek so uh, there's a lot to look over, uh, we'll do one thing at a time. We'll start with the collection log. Here's what the log looks like. We're 9 out of 12 for the main raids uniques. Uh, just never got Tebow, Claws, or Dins. And then as for the raids data tracker plugin, you can see all the uniques that I got during this grind and all the uniques I've seen during this grind. So I got 20 uniques in 18 million points. Uh, that was 685 raids. I do have 1,006 KC in total, uh, but the other 321 raids were from a year ago when I first started doing raids. And then I've seen 70 drops in the last 63 million points. The entire time I was doing raids, I was always free for all, meaning if other people got a drop, they were not splitting the GP to my main. And whenever I got a drop, I wouldn't be splitting GP from my main to them. And if we take a look at the loot tracker, here's all the loot from the last 686 raids. The value is 761 mil. And uh, I'm gonna log on to the main actually and show you everything I earned on the main. Oh wait, I had to put all the dexes and arcanes into the bank. Um, because I wasn't able to fit all of them in my inventory because I was using my main to spec a tecton. Here's all the normal loot that I dropped over to the main. I did actually end up keeping the coal. This was just at the start. I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep it, but this is all the regular loot, 25 mil worth. And then if we add all the uniques onto here, that bumps it up to a nice, cool 206 mil. And I will be dropping the second Ancestral set over to the main as well. I have no idea how to do CMs. I don't have the gear for them. I'm not going to make my friends carry me through over 200 CMs. It's 1 out of 75 to get a Twisted Kit. That's just to meet the drop rate. And, you know, there's no guarantee you'll even get it by the drop rate. Plus, I don't even have the Omelette Pet anyways, so CMs would be kind of a waste. I've also never owned Ancestral on the main. So I'm kind of excited to actually have, like, a full Ancestral set for free, pretty much on the main so that'd be cool and i'll be dropping over the dhcb and elder mall eventually too i do want to keep the code eye in the uim though but yeah for the last two and a half months on this account i have not emptied anything into the bank you can see i hid the deposit inventory button my inventory has just been all this loot that i dropped over from the uim and then a bunch of supplies for the raid i'd pretty much just like also kind of pack meal brews and restores but now for the first time in two and a half months 
uh, this is going to be an empty inventory on the main. Which doesn't really matter because I literally don't play this account anyways. And I haven't really even played this account for like two or three years. And going over to the UIM high scores, my rank with 1006 raids KC for UIM is rank 17. As I like to do a lot whenever I have a long grind like this is show all the XP that I gained in all the different skills. So I made this nice little graphic I'll put on screen and going from top to bottom starting in the first column, we gained 5.8 million hit points XP. I didn't track for each skill specifically like range, magic, and the melees. I figured hit points is the main one to keep track of since that kind of just adds them all up together. Uh, the herb lore XP, I've not made a single potion outside of raids. All of that XP is from making potions inside of raids and then from the dark relics that you get from raids I get like 13 or 14k herb lore XP. Oh and I guess a little bit from herbivore too. It wasn't too much XP. I think when I was doing herby I got like 2k herb lore XP per hour while doing it. Although I guess hunting herby for over 100 hours probably would add up to quite a bit. But yeah I haven't made any potions or cleaned any herbs outside of raids. There's the mining XP because mining has been my main downtime activity for pretty much the whole time I was doing raids. I uh, gained almost 400k smithing XP just for making addy darts to refill the blowpipe. The hunter XP, 10 million hunter XP is how long it took me to get the herby pet. And we ended up with over 14 million hunter XP as well. Fletching XP was almost a million and that was just from making the addy darts. The cooking XP was just from cooking the sharks for raids. That means I cooked almost 10,000 sharks for the raids grind, which kind of sounds like a lot, but considering the amount of time I put into raids, it's really not that much. That pretty much means that 20 hours of minnow fishing got me enough sharks to do, I guess, like 79 days of raids for like all day every day. And then the fishing XP was from fishing minnows to get more sharks. It was 1.2 million fishing XP. But in terms of the time I spent at raids, if you include the time spent scouting and just getting teams together and having to bag up and use up my loot after raids and stuff, uh, probably came out to about overall an average of one hour per raid. So that means in the last 79 days, I've spent almost 700 hours raiding. And that's just for the raiding. And then, of course, you saw all that other XP on the side. That's probably pretty much just as much time as I spent raiding. I spent training other skills like mining, hunter, fishing, etc. So needless to say, this is uh, the end of a very, very long saga. This is the most time I put into anything on the account. Uh, for reference, I spent 500 hours at Corp. I guess I spent 700 hours at Raids in this session, but in total, I spent, I guess, like a thousand hours at Raids. But you know, it feels even longer because of all the other skilling I did in between. So another saga of the UIM is coming to an end. Uh, I'll just do a quick bag check. So here's what his spore looks like. And then here is what the bag looks like. Now what's next though, is that for the next, I don't know how long it's gonna take, one month, two months, maybe longer, I have no idea. Uh, we're gonna be spending all this time using up the supplies from raids. So I have like all these ores I have to use up. I have all these planks that I have to use up. And I have a bunch of other things planned that I wanna do as well. I feel like I can finally play the game again, dude. I've been locked in the chambers of Zerg for so long now. I'm finally breaking free of the prison. That makes it sound like I didn't like it. I really did have a lot of fun doing raids. It was a lot of fun raiding with friends and seeing and getting all these crazy drops and just experiencing the hype. It was a lot of fun, but it is time to move on. And uh, I guess the start of a new journey begins next video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day and I will see you again next time.